person in place and a community liaison, liaison person in place. So they're in place and K through 12 met with the school, but also was serving four other schools. And Cornell has a commitment to hit X number of students and X number of teachers to really make an impact as promised under the Bloomberg administration. But um, the school has a, a PTA person who we invited to come last night to hear things firsthand. And they've met the K through 12. They're, they're happy to have met the K through 12 liaison. But I think we're gonna have to help as a community because the Girls Who Code is not going to happen again this year. Uh, it's already summer as far as the school folks are concerned and fall and no new programs have really, you know, come to light. And so I think what, you know, the teachers are asking for through this PTA liaison, Fiona Walsh, uh, Fiona Taylor, is that, um, you know, do any of us have STEM contacts, uh, science, technology, engineering, and math? Or, or any know of any programs that we can do some introductions and help that along. I, I feel like when the introductions are made, things happen faster. Uh, the other, uh, the I think that um, those are the notes that I have now. Matthew Katz took some great notes as well, and I am sure I have neglected an item or two. Do you want to add? Just a couple of minor things. Thank you. Larry Parnes brought up a really interesting idea. He noted that at construction sites all over New York, there are windows, so you can watch what they're doing. And he suggested that to them so we could see what they're up to. Uh, they didn't turn it down. So. Also, another question that came up was this question of the July 4th fireworks being returned to the East River. Now, what we've learned is that they're going to be pretty far downtown. They're going to be about at the level of um, the East River Bridges, uh, Brooklyn Bridge, uh, Williamsburg Bridge. Of course, they're up in the air, and so there's the potential for people coming to Rosal Island to see them. Uh, when we brought this up with Charlene and Delicato about the things that we used to do in terms of preparing for that, she simply hid her head in her arms. <laughs> so, don't expect 4,000 chairs down at Fort Freedoms Park this year. But, we won't this, but, but it seems to be around the bend that we're not going to have visibility. Yeah. yeah, the visibility will be very poor because it's everything south of the Williamsburg Bridge. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, yeah. even the people in Queens are upset. Mm -hmm. you know? We did see a peak of the Brooklyn Bridge. It's 100th anniversary. Yeah, it wasn't, it, wasn't it, was it wasn't worth it. Right. It wasn't worth it. Wasn't now we have to tell 4,000 people to come to the island, get disappointed, and shop in the chaos. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, That's about it. Yes. Okay. Um, I had kind of a heard kind of a contradiction between something that Ellen said and something that you had said okay. about pollutants. You were concerned. What happens if we find that there are pollutants in the air quality? And what you said was that if uh, that if um, there was a pollution event that almost shut construction down. So I think that, that those kind of contradict each other. I think the answer to your question is that uh, in part of air monitoring, it can reach a point where literally construction has to be shut down. And I think that that uh, the committee, the, uh, has to, the task force really has to get a clear sense for the community uh, in regard to what actually are the steps? What actually happens? Okay. So I, I have numbers. Numbers. But we're not maybe happy with those. They are giving That's us, not my question. No. That's They're not giving my question. us numbers of both the daily average and the daily maximum. That's not my question either. Well, what they told us was that the particulates must be less than 0 0.1 or what milligrams happens? per milliliter or what as happens? a standard. Let me think. Let, let uh, the maximum uh, so far. Let me get my question answered before you go off on a tangent. Okay? Here's my question. My question is, what I, no matter what the level is that people, that, that whatever intervention is, what is the intervention? I'm not asking what's the The level. answer to your I'm question is, the if, the, if the measurement is equal to or over 0 0.15 milligrams per milliliter, Construction 
stops. Okay, so construction stops. That's the interesting. Yeah, that's it. Stops. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Right. The, okay. the, the second part of the answer is that the closer you get to the construction site, the clearer you can mon they can monitor exactly whether the pollutant level is directly caused by them. And so that's what they're doing. They actually figure out that if you blow, if the wind is blowing this way, um, um, and you know they're measuring down. two ways that the wind is blowing, and if the and if the difference between the the baseline of the wind blowing towards the site, so basically it's a city wind, you know the the ambient wind, is a certain difference from the the, the wind blowing away from the site. Then, that the, then if that if the wind blowing away from the site has a certain amount of more particles in it than the wind blowing towards the site, then they stop construction. But, right. but because okay. they know that it's caused by them. Yeah. But if the farther away we get from the site, the less clear it is that the, the air quality problem is caused by them, and that's where okay. we have to determine whether you know whether it's worth it. I'm wondering whether. There's some kind of city uh, policy on this. That's what, I, that's what we have to. But it's probably not good enough. Is what I'm. But is what I'm trying to <laughs> yeah. insert here. Well, those are the questions. There are higher asked. standards than well, the ones they follow. I think that the place that it should be asked is at the at the meeting. Oh yes, we yeah. held last night. Yes, yeah. but and, looking and at who is knowledgeable thing. that you asked Andrew? Andrew. No, no. Who on the city level? Andrew is going to say whatever Andrew says, but we need to know what the policy is regarding the city and what we can do to change that policy to make it appropriate for Roosevelt Island. Right. And so and don't Ben Callis, no, that absolutely. Uh, ben Callis has a representative, and Gail Brewer have a representative in the room, as does yep. Serrano's office as well, uh, and Counter's office as well. So they're all asking these questions and. What I was going to say was that Andrew Winter said he would find out more, and if we could list some toxic particulates that we were worried about, he would also get more information. He didn't have it. But our allies, I would say, are the Kalos and our elected officials. So we need to coordinate that. We need to Absolutely. Yeah, that's why we sit together and we know each other and, and we continue to talk. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and to their credit, Rira. Is, is the Bureau Planning Committee is actually looking into it as well. So um, I know they've been in touch with the Queens College um, the Air Quality Monitoring Group. So you know, there, there's a number of different. It, there's going to be a synergy, I think. Yeah, yeah. A, a number of different entities are looking into this. Well, it sounds issue. like there are too many entities. I don't, I don't know about that. Well, we just we just start to meet everybody, and we're uh, you know fine tuning the issue, and then it means you know to really work on it. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna need And I mean, there there is coordination with this issue, and so it's just but it's just beginning. So it's like we're taking you know we're taking this slowly so that we get it right and we make sure that all the right questions are being asked and and we don't jump into things that, that too quickly with this because we want to make you know it's an expensive proposition we want to make sure that if we you know if if the community goes out and looks for for money to do this that it's for it, it's going to answer the questions that we need to have answered and it's going to get you know and, and it's going to be it's going to get appropriate information and not just fluff is that the no, where it becomes paralysis of analysis. Exactly. We need somebody to We're just starting with the analysis. Yeah. Yes. Right. We're, We're, not there. There. We're not at paralysis. Fully. And it's the same thing we mentioned about the MTA and, 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 you know, okay, now we've addressed that. We have uh, people who are also concerned about that and so you streamline it for effective execution. Hi, Could you just repeat one thing that you said? Yes. Last year we had the girls who code program after we kind of shame them publicly into doing yes. something. Now they're not going to do it again this summer. Did they give a reason? Um, I have to find out more about that, but um, it doesn't cost the, them very no, much money to do that. There was a uh, uh, the PTA rep had mentioned that there was a little bit of disappointment on the girls who took Git uh, side, 
and that the report from the girls who called was that it was really effective for high school kids. Oh. Now we know that we, our school really needs attention in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, the middle school. Right. And, and to the credit of Girls Who Code, they, they geared it to a lower age group for the first time ever. Um, but they, the school, I don't know if it was mutual, but there was a bit of disappointment. They are looking for a program like it, but the, it will not be that one. And um, they feel they're already behind for summer and fall. I mean, that really yeah. should have been was the, was the disappointment the program, or was it the lack of numbers? Because I understand the school we had eight, about eight girls. girls. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know what the, I think it talking was about disappointment. They, the attendees from Rosa Island. Yeah. That the, yeah. the, the disappointment wasn't necessarily in the program itself, but rather in the lack of inclusion of kids from the island in the program. That wasn't my impression. It was um, the, those who participated, but I definitely have to find out more. All I know is that when we say vigilance and support, our school really needs it. We're happy the K through 12 is there. Now it's an execution, and we did mention that last night. You know, one thing that occurred to me about that, I got the impression that they were talking about a lack of funding, which to my mind suggests external funding. Why external funding is necessary for this, I don't know. Did you get the impression? That it was a funding issue? There are other programs that were mentioned uh, with the K through 12 person, and the funding and funding was brought up. Funding was brought up uh, as being an issue. So the school is looking for teacher development and professional development, and and even grant writing help and these kinds of things. So there's a lot of good ideas, but if there's no money to do them, they're just ideas. They never happen. So. Uh, there are hurdles to overcome.